On Capitol Hill today, one of the most significant votes of the year. In the House, the leaders of both parties worked together to oppose the most fiery voices in their own caucuses, pushing aid for Ukraine and other allies over a key hurdle. Lisa Desjardins is here and she joins me now. William, this was a massive win for Ukraine. It was a loss for those who fear more involvement there. But it was also a day where we saw the House move away from the most conservative and liberal voices, a rare day to see that action at the Capitol is not always about the shouting. You could have missed it looking at the silent Capitol steps and gray sky this morning, but inside, a defining day for this Congress and U.S. allies. Now is the moment. History has its eyes on this chamber. Today we are at an inflection point. There's a lot at stake at this moment. The high-stakes vote was procedural, whether to tee up the four foreign aid bills. As dozens of Republicans voted against their own party-led process, watch the Democratic column on the left for a rare shift. Democrats moved en masse to vote yes, saving the bills and potentially Speaker Johnson. His political gamble brought a win. Even though it's not the perfect legislation, it's not the legislation that we, were, we would write if Republicans were in charge of both the House, the Senate, and the White House, this is the best possible product that we can get under these circumstances uh, to take care of these really important obligations. So but within minutes, of signs tomorrow, of possible uh, trouble uh, ahead for Johnson. Basically, Steve, a civil war has broken out in the, the House of Representatives. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene went online to say she is working to get more votes to oust him. If you're a Republican voter or a Republican donor, this should really give you pause to ask what exactly is happening to the Republican Party right now. The package of four bills at the heart of this is big dollars, $95 billion, with far reach. The most muscle goes to two countries. Ukraine, the piece that divides Republicans the most, accounts for nearly $61 billion. That includes over $20 billion to replenish U.S. stockpiles and $14 billion for weapons. About $9 billion is loans, which could be forgiven. For Israel, $26.4 billion, a large increase over the original Senate bill. It contains no additional conditions on Israel aid, a raw issue for many on the left. Back on the Capitol steps, some hardliners are considering ousting Johnson now. I'm not going to comment on that unless it's called that, but what I can tell you is, you know, we have to turn this around immediately. My position is that I'm open. And I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm going to do. And we'll see, we'll, see if that, we'll see if that materializes. We'll see if the trigger's pulled on this. That won't be up to me. But, uh... I'm definitely frustrated, like uh, a lot of the conference. Others point to a new push, vote on Johnson in the fall. I don't know that Mike will want it after what he's been through. He's taken a lot of heat, and to his credit, um, he, he stepped up to the job. I think we ought to have a contest in November, a deliberative process, uh, to select, hopefully, the Speaker of the House Majority. Uh, but I, I don't think it would be a wise course of action to do that now. But still others pushed back. Uh, Bob Good's a, a bully. Chaboy's a bully. And the vast majority of the majority um, is sick and tired of it. Chuck Schumer seems to be in charge right now, and that's frustrating for me. But you want Mike Johnson to stay? I, I just, my, if it's not Mike Johnson, then who? We got deep into the bench. Many Democrats defended their move as an easy choice. We have to make sure that the Chaos Caucus cannot, which is the Republican Party, cannot continue to stand in the way of absolutely vital Ukraine, Ukraine, Israel, and, and Taiwan military assistance. Whatever happens to Johnson, Democrats see someone else involved. I think Trump plays a big role in this. <laughs> Trump is uh, somewhat of an isolationist, a nationalist, uh, has sent negative messages to the international community uh, since 2016. Those four foreign aid bills are on track for passage tomorrow in the House. They will go to the Senate as one package together. They are expected to pass there, William, but we don't know the timing. It's the Senate. Really remarkable development today. So this was, as you say, a procedural vote. But can you remind us why this was so pivotal across all these different issues? In the Trump era, there have been many questions of American identity, including the identity of the Republican Party. I think you can look at what happened today as something that could set the direction for existential questions about political and global direction. Here's exactly what I mean. Let's look at some of the things that were involved in this procedural vote today that it told us. This keeps us on track for current policy in Ukraine and Israel. Major 
issues of public debate. In addition, one of these bills would, does contain what would amount to either a TikTok ban or forcing that company to sell. Here we have a major digital impact across social media. There also happened today a loss for the Republican hardliners. We have told our audience and everyone knows again and again, those are the group that have spent this entire Congress saying we will not compromise. We think compromise is wrong and we are going to get our way. Today was almost one of their last real stands this time in Congress. There's not a lot of time left for this Congress to do business. These votes this weekend are sort of one of the last big items on the agenda. One other thing, this was a victory for Speaker Johnson. We'll see how long it lasts. And his approach has been slower and quieter. And yet he emerged today with Democrats' help as the winner. You mentioned to me earlier that you couldn't find another example in modern congressional history where the minority party saved the majority party in this case. Uh, why did the Democrats do this? Well, part of it is what's obvious, issues of Ukraine and Israel. There are members, many members in the Democratic caucus that support one or the other or both. In fact, it's interesting the party has become more of the kind of foreign security hawks than the Republicans. But I can also report from sources involved, sources aware, that there was a high-level talks from Democrats to Republicans saying over the past week and two that if indeed you bring this full Ukraine aid, all the foreign aid bills to the floor, Speaker Johnson, we will support you. We will make sure you're not ousted. And while I don't have the reporting that he tacitly accepted the deal, that's what we see on the floor. That's what we see in operation here. Another thing for Democrats, think about this politically. It really was a win-win for them. It showed that Republicans need them to govern. And also, the Republican base is very concerned, very upset about this happen, happening. They're getting phone calls already. Many of these Republicans will go home to their base and have to explain what happened. And Speaker Johnson's position with his own base is weakened. That's a story we'll probably keep covering. Lisa Desjardins, thank you so much for all this great reporting. You're welcome.